Hi, welcome to Dad Tech. This is a video about this technology right here, and this is a Mario. And these are holographic fans. I have one up here, two, one back here. Actually, it's down here because I was just talking about it. But holographic fans, very interesting technology. I have a couple of key points I want to talk about, some positive, some negative, and let's talk about it. Now, here's what I want to at least discuss. If you've seen my other videos about these, these fans, these holograms, these crazy cool technologies, this is the three array. This is the first time I've had three together in sync. All the other ones I've reviewed and looked at, they've all been a one by themselves, whether it's a four or two blade fan and the pros and cons of how that all looks. Now, what I'll say just off the bat, having three in a row in sync with big images like this is fantastic. In a moment, you're going to see the videos I've uploaded myself to this. My son loves Optimus Prime. He saw that. He was so happy. Here's some videos I recorded myself. Here's what I want to tell you what I've learned about all these different things. When I first started recording, I played around with the frame rate. I thought the frame rate was going to be the most important aspect of capturing this on video. And if recording, capturing on video is important to you, then listen up. At this point in time, I have 24 frames a second. If you do 30, 60, 120, you start to see some flickering. And I'll show you some B-roll here of me talking when I didn't record my audio a minute ago for 20 minutes. I'll show you shooting in 24 frames a second at uh, 1 over 50th of a second on the shutter speed. And you'll see some rotations, some, some flickering. Here, this is 24 frames a second, and this is at 1 40th of a second. So that little difference now, you may notice I've got a little bit more of a blurry hand maybe, so my motions in my face may be a little bit blurrier because I've stepped it down by 1 tenth of a degree or, or, or 10 stops or whatever the, the stuff is with, with shutter speed. And, and as I was recording my other stuff, I was concentrating more on frames a second. I thought that was the most important part. And again, as you go higher, you start to see the individual well, actually less and less of the image, but I forgot. I forgot to take my, I forgot to put my um, camera brain on and I was thinking more dad tech brain. I was just thinking frames a second, frames a second. In reality, shutter speed is probably the most important part. So as you can see here, I dropped it down and you can barely see, you can see a little bit of movement right here, but the actual flickering of like black goes away completely. So that's one thing I've discovered and in all my other videos, I just didn't even consider shutter speed. So that was a good, important point. And yeah, just having, this set up by the way i'm looking here my monitors here and to not be disrespectful to you guys and the mic i'm not don't want to look away um to refer to it so i'm looking at my monitor so i apologize for my eye line not being great but I'm, I'm seeing what's behind me right so a video like this where you can you know in reality in, in real life looking at this it just looks so good it looks very crisp um you can see some rotation um you can see some jittering of the blades but you know, it looks a little bit overblown right here, but in reality, it looks really, really good. So very impressed. So I think the technology as a whole, as you start pairing them together, looks really, really good. And um, having it, you know, three or you could do it the other way, or you could have more and more and more, right? A big old panel of it is so, so it just improves and elevates the technology. Now, obviously, the more you get, it, it becomes more expensive, right? So the one I have behind me right here, and the one I have above my head over here. Um, one by themselves, they look cool, they look awesome. They are a nice little showcase. They give you an idea and if just like you want a little logo in the background, which is what I put that one up there for, is fantastic. Um, there's a reason I didn't want to have that one on, but let's do it. There we go. So we may as well have that one go in the background as well. I didn't want it just to distract from the one in front of us, but but here we go. The implementation of the technology is great. Now it's a newer technology, right? So it's not perfect. It's not ideal. I've got some qualms with it. I've got some qualms with the implementation of this technology in this specific product. But what I can say, if you want something to be a holographic standalone display that has a stand that you plug in and, and has something cool looking like this, then then awesome. You've got the right thing here. Obviously, you want to be concerned with safety. So if if some way you can put it behind some glass or whatever so it can be interacted with, that would be the ideal scenario. So I don't want to, I kind of want to keep saying positive things because I think there's more positives than there is negatives, but the negatives are at least need to be addressed and, and they're more of an annoyance than anything else. So let's talk about, say, the technology. So let me actually even just caveat with that was it does come with this thing which is a tp link router it's got some connectors in the back which is great when it's plugged in go on the app um connect your wi-fi to it and then or actually hardline it in 
and then you connect your app to it and then you've got more controls to upload videos, pictures and whatnot. So that's important, that comes with it. Uh, this thing you have one, two, three uh, fans, the stand, the base, all comes with it, the power, right? And you get actually three remotes. Okay. So here's where my issue comes in. The, the putting together the assembly, it is a bit of a pain. The instructions are not very good. It looks like they've been written by someone who doesn't natively speak English. And there's some key important information, actually some, you might say, important safety cautions and important safety instructions that really get glossed over and they're in an image that really don't make sense. So what's important, and you can kind of see here the, the, the base of it or the, the structure of it without the image behind it. So what's really important is the instructions are not very good. If somebody wants me to create a video, if one person out there wants me to create an instructional video of how to put this thing together, I will disassemble mine and reassemble it for your benefit. If no one cares about it, I won't bother doing it. But I think if you're an English speaker, the instructions are very difficult to understand and, the, and some important parts, which I'll cover in a moment. So the assembly, the actual putting together of the structure is pretty straightforward, but there's some key important par parts and points to it. The other thing as well is, as you can see, say an individual fan right here, uh, and actually I'm going to use this as a prop. So the back of them is not too dissimilar to this, but it is definitely different. Um, and by default, the power outlet, at least actually on both, uh, not on this one, but on this one behind me, the the way the locking hook connects, the, the by default, the output comes up and out. And now I didn't want to go up and out and then bend it around or bend it whichever way at nine degrees, because that's really not good for a cable. So the way they've designed that is not great, but I don't know if they had this in mind, you can take on the other one, you can do on this one as well, but on the other one, which is slightly different, the back plate off, rotate it around. So then the, the locking mechanism, it's kind of like a hook, it sits, um, it's like a little um, jig and saw type um, joint. It goes in and it sits and locks in there by gravity. So then you can rotate it around. So your power is coming from down, it then locks in place. And then you have a, a lock or a little bolt screw that comes in from the top to lock it in, in, in place. Now, if you had it by default and you wanted um, the, the power connected to go down, but you didn't take the base plate off, at that point, your, your little mechanism, your little joint is now working backwards against you because now it's got gravity pulling it down and your lock, your little screw is coming from the bottom. Um, as well as uh, as well as the the powers coming from the bottom. So with in that setup, everything's working against you. It might work itself loose. And these things go up pretty high RPMs, and I wouldn't want anything to fail going that fast. So take the back plate off, rotate it 180 degrees, put it back on. You're not interfering with anything. It's literally just a plate. And then at that point, uh, the mechanism. So the one right here and the ones here all sit correctly, and and gravity's helping you out with that lock. Your bolt's coming in from the top on all three, and your cable's coming down instead of 90 degrees out or you know in and then having to manipulate the, the cable. So on that line, the biggest, the second annoying part of this thing is what I just said, because if you don't do that, then you've got all your cables coming at the top here of all three of them, and the cable management is non-existent. It's basically just your power adapter, like you see with a lot of different appliances with a, a DC outlet, and then your power outlet coming out the other side. So for the top one, you've got your cable that goes from the top all the way down the bottom, and the brick sits just above the base. So it's still got some weight on it. So imagine then if you've got your cable coming in from the top right there, it's stretching down more, and then it sits a little bit higher up. So then there's more pressure on the top of this thing, as well as the, the, the brick is a little bit higher up. So now that I've got it coming from here all the way down, it basically goes down to the bottom of the base. It doesn't touch, but it's close. So then the cables are all the same length. So our second one here goes all the way down and now your brick sits on the floor because it's further along down. And then the third one at the bottom, that's longer, you know, it literally has only got a couple of, uh, a foot or two until it's there. So you've got plenty of slack there. So there's just no consideration for cable management at all. There's no like, like central column of wiring or anything on the mines. Now, if I miss some in the instructions, I missed it. I just don't think so because it didn't mention it at all. Actually, I don't think even, like it didn't bring it up. I finished the instructions and said, well, what about the cables? So there's that. Um, so there is a way around it and I've got them all cable tied and whatnot. So no, nothing's going to come loose and interfere and whack itself into the blades and cut itself or, you know, just cause devastation. So they're all nicely neat coming down the column uh, behind 
and then um, the, I've got them all cable tied at the bottom. So at least the bricks are all kind of grouped together. But then you've got three outlets that you need to power somehow. So then you take an adapter, you know, a, uh, uh, an extension cord, put all three into into your one extension cord, and then you got one cable coming out. So just that's the kind of new technology uh, implementation that we're looking at that they just haven't gone that far to consider how do we make this better so that the cable management's taken care of. So imagine if you times that by, say, a nine grid and you've got nine fans dealing with, and then basically it's just the exact same at that point, but you've then got nine cables to worry about and mess around with. And, and obviously if you make a mistake on one, it like clips a, a blade and then you're, you know, just a bunch of stuff like that. The other thing is the important safety aspect with the instructions is um, the top one here, and the bottom one are offset. They're forward from the back one. And they give you spacers and they give you a picture of what you need to do with the spacers, but it's not that clear. And it's and, and the spacers are clear. So like the image of them is not that good. And really what they're looking for, and again, if you want instructions on this, I can give them, but they're looking to put three spacers on the top, they give you six, and three on the bottom and nothing in the middle. I didn't know that. It didn't tell you that. There's very, very small writing, but it, it doesn't really tell you in there either. So it does give you an, uh, an illustration to say offset it, but if you just do it by one spacer, I almost turned it on because I was on, I was done. I thought I was done. I had one spacer there between the top, the bottom, and the middle. As I span the top one, it went through fine. I span the second one, it went through fine. I span the bottom one, and I heard a little click, click. I'm like, oh yeah, not too sure about that. So I added all the spaces on the top, all the spaces on the bottom, so three and three, and then that offset enough so that there's not. You know, there's there's safety there. There's not enough space for them to hit. With that said, this is not really negative. This is just a for your information. This one and this one I said are forward. This one in the middle is back. So if you want to um, put an image that's full screen, that's taken the advantage of all of the real estate you've got with uh, the video, then you've got a little gap here and a little gap here where the overlap is, and it looks fine. But if you were to put a talking head right here, which I've done, you'll see. I'll, I'll find the video. We'll see it. Um, I put my head right here, and what you'll find is like my eye line, right above my eye line right there, you can see the the, the curve. And in real life, because there's, there is a depth there, there's a difference, you're seeing it more uh, in person than probably what you're seeing right now. So really what's important with that is if you're going to put an image on of, say, a face or a talking head, you want that on the top, and you want to keep that away from here because there's just too much going on in this space for it to look good, and it's very, very distracting. Whereas a video like this, you know, you, you're you're fine. You're not um, noticing it too much in person. You'll see a little bit of a difference between the images, but you will certainly see in a moment what it might look like. So I'm going to use the remote now, and the remote itself is fine. But if you see here, I change. I just throw it over there, press a button, and it changes the middle one. You've got to get it just right so that it changes all three. And if you don't, it resyncs back up and, and goes back to the prior image. So you've really got to like get it in the right spot so that it actually changes all three at the, the same point. And this is just infrared, so, and there's infrared um, receivers on, on each of them. So the app though, again, not perfect, not ideal. You've got to connect it to the router to then start uploading stuff. So there's extra stuff there you've got to consider, but they, I mean, the implementation is there. It just could be all refined and, and be made perfect. So this is what I was talking about where you can see on my eyes right here where the crease is, where the overlap is, and it just doesn't look great, not ideal. I redo it, and I think it may be the next video in a moment, or it will be in a couple, um, where you see where I've done that exact same image, that circle, it's actually my, my YouTube channel, and I put me on the top right here on this um, first fan, and then the rest remaining. So all that we're saying there is that I'm missing the top part of the image that I wanted to show if I'm moving it down, and I'm in the middle, but then it doesn't look as good. So you take that and you put it up. You just kind of got to configure it in a way that makes sense for this. So um, obviously, I'm wasting a lot of real estate there by just having dad tech in the in the upper. But, uh, but you can see here the two. So there it is. So there I put my whole face. This is just a screenshot from my phone, from the YouTube, the YouTube page, but I've got the whole circle in there. So I mean, that looks really good, I think. And in person, again, looks fantastic. Looks a little bit blown out here with the, the highlights and with the camera and stuff, but it looks fantastic in real life. So, so that's quite a lot of it. Um, back to Christmas. Uh, there are a lot of Christmas ones. There's some kind of like dragony, demony ones. I had to take that off because I don't want my kids to be scared. But my son loves the Optimus Prime one. He thinks it's great. Um, great technology. Um, some room for improvements for sure. This is certainly not pricey. But again, for the price you're paying for something like this, 
I think you're getting a lot of technology there. I think you're getting a lot of utility. I think you're getting, to some degree, some great engineering. The way they put the stands together is different from I would have, however, would have thought of putting together. But obviously, they've got to consider the the high revs of these things. And they have thought about it, but there's just some room for improvement um, for, for what you're paying for, I think. It could just be more polished. But if you just want it and, and you want, like the technology and you want to try it out, not even try it out, obviously trying it out, you get a smaller one for 100 bucks, not this one. But for three together, I can't, I can't tell you how much cooler it is to, to be able to manipulate the three images and, and, and create something that looks like that, a, a running man, and in, in person, it just looks top notch. The dragon that you saw initially looks very good. The uh, Optimus Prime looks fantastic. Uh, the Iron Man looks fantastic as he's uh, as he's there just rotating around. It just reminds you of you know Star Trek, Star Wars, um, Iron Man, all the Avengers. Just the, the hologram technology. It's like it's there. Where I got introduced to this technology was at CES in Vegas this year, and they had booths. They had um, big kind of like glass domes and with these fans right in the middle and you just see stuff like that and you press a button and the the it starts talking to you and the audio syncs up and and it is like you're in the future when you see this in person and these are like um nine by nine or three by three let's say um grids or maybe it's a, a two by three or a two by four grid of fans that just look like this and just look like a hologram and uh, this technology is there we have it uh, at the consumer level where we can utilize it and, and play around with it. And, and if it's just for fun in your house, if it's for um, so many other things, but if it's for you know advertisement boards for your business, I think, I think that's just the main things that you're going to be using it for or just like a showcase. I've showed this to many people. Someone comes over, I'm like, hey, you got to see something. They see it. They're amazed by it. Like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Uh, but obviously then you just got to be concerned with someone touching it. My kids get way too close to it for my liking. I'm like, get away from this thing. So with Iron Man suiting up in the background, I'll end with this. This is fantastic technology. If you have any questions, if you want me to make a tutorial on putting this thing together, if one person wants it, I will do it. If you have any questions, I will answer them. And um, Optimus Prime, I will end with Optimus Prime. Roll out, Bumblebee. My son loves loves Optimus Prime Transformers. So I've tried. I've been trying to perfect my Optimus Prime voice. So with that said, I don't want to get copyright striked for being so good. I don't know if that'll work, but. Uh, Autobots roll out. Let's end with this. I am Optimus Prime. And there you go. And then to my outtake of me messing up and uh, and not hitting record on a 20 minute video and just sat there talking, talking without this thing even getting recording audio. So you'll see that next, but hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Side note, have you ever recorded a whole video for over 20 minutes and then not hit record on your record on your audio? This was recording here. Look. He's me talking away to no audio, and now we've got audio. And this is going to be an outtake because I'm happily pissed with myself that I uh, didn't hit record on my recording device, on my audio recorder, so I didn't get no audio. Okay, so welcome.